Let's be honest here, who doesn't love a good ninja game? Seriously, there's been so many good ones over the years, I kind of lose track of them all. We're talking Ninja Gaiden, Shinobi, Ninja Spirits, Tenchu. However, one of my favorites doesn't really fit in with the rest I just mentioned. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about Strider. Although I'd say that most gamers these days are more familiar with the character of Strider Hiryu via the Marvel vs. Capcom games and the recently released reboot on the current generation systems, the series actually started out as a sort of collaborative endeavor between Capcom and a manga collective called Moto Kikaku in the late 80s. The Strider series saw two games released early on. One was injected directly into the booming arcade scene, and the other, that's right, it went home to the good old Nintendo Entertainment System. A system that had really hit its, uh, stride years earlier. <laughs> Developed on Capcom's CPS-1 hardware, the arcade version of Strider was released first, in March of 1989. Taking place in the year 2048, Strider Hiryu, an elite member of a mercenary force, is hired to fight across Eurasia and assassinate the self-proclaimed leader of the world, Grandmaster Mayo. <laughs> no setup befitting of a quarter muncher, if you ask me. Cutting soldiers in half, left and right, Hiryu is a straight-up killing machine, to put it lightly. He is equipped with this sort of plasma sword called the Cypher, and a number of amazing acrobatic moves, like this awesome cartwheel jump and a kicking slide move. Hiryu also acquires a number of robotic helpers, or options as they're called here. The journey across Eurasia has some pretty cool locales. You'll travel to Siberia, to the airship Balrog, all the way to the Amazon, and finally to the Grandmaster's base, on a space station called the Third Moon. While the whole game is not particularly long, it's made up of pretty much constant set pieces, and in my opinion, some of the most iconic moments from any game in the 1980s. There's some really great stuff here. The mechanical gorilla, getting devoured by piranhas, the flipping gravity. I'll never forget the first time I did the hill run in Siberia with everything blowing up behind me. Definitely my favorite part of the game. I think that most people who have a passing interest in this series are probably most familiar with this version. I guess it's probably because it's been ported about a million times. It also helps that the sequel and the reboot were both based on this version's story. a couple months later, Strider was released on the NES in North America in July of 1989. This time around, the Striders are a covert operation team. Not so different than mercenaries, I guess. The game begins with Hiryu being assigned by the team leader, Matic, to find and kill his best friend Kane, another member of the Strider team that had been captured by an unknown enemy. This leads Hiryu across the globe to uncover a nonsensical plot involving these tree-like mind control devices called Zane. That who would have guessed it goes all the way to the top. A lot less linear than the coin app version, Strider NES is more of an adventure. You see, Hiryu will collect keys for security doors and find boots that will allow him to do amazing things, like walking on water and up the side of buildings on magnetic surfaces. He'll also obtain floppy disks that contain encrypted material, usually leading us to plot devices that will take us to the next country. Hiryu has the same arsenal as the arcade game, though his jumping animation is no longer the awesome cartwheel flip, and his cypher swing is no longer the cool yellow laser arc. Instead, it's just this. I always kind of felt like it looked like a metal wing, not like a sword swing. There's also a bit of a level-up system in place that occurs after completing certain story points that increase your life. And, in another new addition to this version, magic. You get a number of spells that you can equip, but you won't find a lot of uses for most of them. To be honest, I only found myself using the high jump and recovery to any serious extent throughout the entire game. Beyond that, you get this ability to shoot plasma waves out of your sword. A practically useless move that only serves to completely break the final boss battle. Kiryu's sword attack is more than powerful enough to deal with just about every enemy. Maybe even too powerful in most cases. Seriously, you can pretty much plow through just about everything as long as you keep an eye on your health. 
What I think is interesting about this version is how it features two different designs of the main character. In the opening cinema, Hiryu looks a lot like his eventual redesign that we've come to know and love from the late 90s with Strider 2 and Marvel vs. Capcom. Once you start the game though, he looks more like his arcade counterpart. I wonder if you look like the opening cinema version of the character, but once the team saw the arcade version, they altered his sprite. Naturally, as you'd expect, this part was a bit longer. It only took me a couple of hours to play through, but it has a nice password feature if you just don't have the block of time to really dedicate. Strider on the NES doesn't get a lot of love. It's got this strangely unfinished feel, like it's downright glitchy and broken at times. The jumping mechanic of the game could be totally unreliable and infuriating. The translation occasionally makes very little sense, which to be fair was kind of a staple at the time. What I find most strange is this version was never released on the Famicom in Japan. It was delayed repeatedly and eventually cancelled. I don't think this version was ported anywhere, except to a Game Boy Advance compilation cartridge called Capcom Mini Mix. Picking a better game is simple here. It's the arcade version that's endured, obviously. But the NES version, I have to say, despite all of its jank, I've actually kind of grown to love it. Sure, it's not a great game, and it's kind of easily forgotten, but it sure is a lot better than I remember it being.